here I am at my desk. It's like quarter to uh, one. Oh no, hang on. 11.51. 10 to 12. Uh, midday. It's oh, I just had the biggest oh, herb tonic and it's still going down probably. Um, what I'm doing today actually is um, um, it's let me check my dates. It's day three of stage one on my Dita Prime. So this video will be Dita Prime five. I'm at the good stage and I'm gonna um, walk to the mountain base, go up the mountain and um, do a whole lot of strength building exercise. Not so much the endurance, I won't do much too much running, but I'll just, you know, happily make my um uh diet video. Um yeah, what I've had uh, I've got a big tub of um here we go. This here is my massive tub of noni cider vinegar full of herbs, which recently I added black tea to. So it um you know it's developing a big vinegar scoby <laughs> on it which is you know it's good i got another kombucha as well but um that's that's another story because that's alcoholic <laughs> but um yeah i had half a cup of that half a cup of uh warm water uh, big teaspoon of sugar oh, thank god i had the sugar in it uh my mlc tonic formula and um Garana and a few other herbs and I sculled it all down. That's half a cup of vinegar and some very strong herbs. So that there <laughs> is churning away. <laughs> so yeah, I gotta keep this um this uh this herb tonic down and I'll be heading off soon. That's what the MLC tonic formula does. It makes you wanna go exercise in about ten minutes after having it. So I've got my whole bag packed. Um, stage one of the diet is the 8th of August. Just a minute. Okay, where was I? So I'm heading up the mountain today and um, still got the cats feeling. It's good to have lots of herbs because it gets you up the mountain. So um. Yeah, definitely it's um, going to be a good journey making Diet of Prime number 5 video and uh, I've got a, a couple of books about uh, weeds and rainforest foods so I'll be studying that up there as well, making a video, taking some herbs and eating lots of food to um, pump this strength building, extra eating um, phase, stage of my Diet of Prime diet which will last this fortnight, 10 then cyclic it's a cyclic diet that lasts a fortnight so um, yeah uh, this is very good and I'll be up the mountain soon okay here I am this is really good <laughs> I've um, left my ass turned the corner here I am dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Going up the mountain, stage one of my Data Prime diet, Data Prime video number five. <sighs> Give up smoking day one, stage day three into stage one of the diet. So um got a bit of muscle on me, been eating too much for a few days, um, been resting a few days. Uh, when I smoke I eat more rest more this is a good stage for the exercise diet um when i actually do get rest which is good as well so um yeah lungs need exercising my muscles are packed full of energy food energy that's been in store for a bit so it's gonna make me huff and puff up the hill for a bit but um yeah just a gentle yet thorough exercise day I'm planning today. A bit of strength building. Um, a little bit of running to begin that adrenaline uh, fat eating stage, but I brought food with me so I can, you know, pack my muscles again for another couple of days. 
um, on the gorge phase of the diet, and then, um, then the next five days after that, I'll get into the, um, the green leaf, <laughs> green mango, and noni leaf, uh, herb powder drink, and that will start reducing my appetite, um, in this way, um, reducing my appetite as such, on stage two of the diet, I will actually, um, start the endurance phase, where I eat just a normal, median amount, and, um, begin the endurance cardio phase of the diet, so, um, this is very good as well, because, um, you know, it builds your cells' stamina or capacity, so stage one, which is what I'm today, it's basically designed to get that, you know, muscle patch, glucagon, you know, when you eat too much, it, you know, at first it stores in your muscles, and then it starts to convert to fat, so, well, that's what happens for me, so I've had three days of eating too much, so my muscles are packed and my fat's starting to overload, and, um, which is a good thing, you know, build up your ATP reserves and, um, your strength capacity, uh, when you, when you fast too much, it, um, it makes it so, you know, you've got a greater efficiency of your body, but less strength, so, stage one, the gorge stage, is really all about, um, oops, <laughs> stage one, the gorge stage is really all about, um, getting that strength phenomena, ATP reserves, the capacity, the potential in your muscles and your fat storage for exercise, getting that, that storage and utilization of the strength capacity to kick into gear. So once you kick into gear this strength potential, you now I've been gorging for a few days, this is day three, oh, two days, day three, I'm also giving up cigarettes, so I've got that nervous um, excitability about me as well. Um, so yeah, because of this, um, you know, getting that strength packed, Huffing and puffing up the mountains, starting the, the energy that's stored in my cells and fat to kick into gear. It's best if I just do a bit of um, strength building exercise uh, because, um, yeah, it's stage one of the diet, that's what it's designed for. Uh, because it's 12 o'clock as well, um, you know, already midday, I do have a torch in case I'm out at dark time. But, um, yeah, if I, uh, because the gym's 24 hour now, if I feel like it, you know, I should feel up to it. Because <laughs> I am giving up c cigarettes as well, it'll, like, in, in excite me to do some more exercise. But when I get back, you know, 12 o'clock at night, 3 in the morning, because the gym is, like, 24 hour, I can do, go and do some... 36k, 69k, double hands, 36k, single hand weights, just do like, you know, as many reps as that, just at a slow pace, to build that muscle strength, muscle strength capacity, so then, because I'm in this gorge stage of the diet, and it's starting to, you know, you did the fast, reduce it all, ate for a couple of days, and then you, um, you're starting to build that strength and body prime capacity since you've had your little rest and eat up. So really day um, day three of the gorge stage is really, you know, get that extra that excess into utilization and by going to the gym at tonight it'll be like, you know, pumping that strength factor which is a, a new growth potential of the cells by enticing this uh, new growth potential of the cells, it's like, it's saying, okay, cells, you are gradually, yet continually in a cyclic nature, in this fortnightly diet, you, at this stage, are learning to grow here, to 
rejuvenate, um, you know, use that extra storage. So it's really a, a growth potential of strength by the cells in this stage of the diet. So, you know, it's very exciting for me. One, to give up cigarettes. <laughs> Two, to do it well on a detox. Strength building workout. And three, to actually get that, um, that strength exercise motivation actually pumping through my veins where the endorphins kick in properly. So, um, this is very good as well. Um, also, I've had a, um, had a, um, onion juice raw, a third of a raw onion, big raw onion in my, um, in my herb juice smoothie and I've got two thirds of the drinks still in there. <laughs> got two more drinks worth still in there. So, um, this is a, a very detox phase for me. Um, usually onion, raw onion at the gym gives me double strength workout, you know, 45 single-handed punch down weights at the gym. So it's a very strengthy building uh, herb juice with raw onion in. So, um, yeah, God bless the raw onion smoothies of the world. <laughs> and um, hopefully that'll also help me detox a lot with the nicotine withdrawal phase of this diet as well. So here I am. Got the rainforest bush on this side, the main road there, going to town that way, but up here, another kilometre to the mountain, and um, if there wasn't the car pollution, oh, if there wasn't the car pollution, I'd be like, you know that, um, that, that phase where, um, the energy in your muscles, the food in your muscles, it's just you, um, you know, pump into actual energy that's utilizable. The best way to do that is start huffing and puffing a bit so your circulation gets moving. And then you start, you know, getting that extra oxygen because you're near the trees. It's just like you're, um, you're pumping the energy, you know, blowing air into the fire. And, um, you can definitely just feel the enthusiasm of your body kicking. This is one of the best times of stage one of the diet. <laughs> when you're just starting to, you know, utilize that bog storage that you've gorged your food about. You know, you know, just starting to kick on that, that energy and muscle exercise capacity to a certain degree that whew, it feels good and the more you huff and puff because you're giving up cigarettes the more you're actually cleaning your lungs but also the more you're fueling up your body fire for um, you know muscle utilization and energy utilization it's a good feeling that's for sure okay here I am on the path. <sighs> Beautiful. Stretch your leg pulse. It's um it's very good. After having rested for a few days. And then you start stretching again. It's like it's not only a beautiful feeling, <laughs> it's like bliss and ecstasy and you know like back and stuff. So it feels nice. You just feel the energy charging up your muscles just with the extent of your stretching. So this is actually a good pull because it's got you know the one there and then stretch your legs higher when you're ready. The rest of it's just the one pull but you know this one's obviously different. So here I am stretching my legs for my diet of Brian video. Whoa! <laughs> That's um, nearly 180. Oh. <laughs> oh. And keep a certain amount of balance on it. So, um, yeah, it's, it's not very hot today, which is good. Got these trees in the road, but... So, here we go. Put my leg up there. And, um, here we go. Stretching out legs 
<laughs> okay, I still am a bit unco because I've uh, been resting for a few days, but here we go. <sighs> okay, that's enough. <laughs> uh, another thing I do, especially for going up the mountain, is um do some squats because it, it really charges up your energy. No, um, I find if I if I go on things like 12 hour bushwalks, give you up smoking and I don't want to stop much because you know it makes me want to crave a cigarette. What I do when I get tired is some um, squatting. Uh, you know you can put your pack down and squat or squat with your pack, whichever one after you know after four hours of mountain climbing you get sore legs. If you sit down on a big rock, you get really tired. That's what I found. But if you do four out four hours of um, mountain uh, mountain climbing and then squat for you know two to five minutes, squatting, stand up, you know, stretch your legs like this, and then you know squat again for another two to five minutes, you know, even half a minute. You find when you stand up again, you know, after four hours of exercise and then move on, it's like. Uh, the actual squatting has um, charged you up so much, you're not tired, whereas if you sit down on a big rock, you get like super tired and don't want to move after four hours. So yeah, uh, definitely the squatting and you know, all the angles of stretch down there that you can possibly think of, is like, it's like, it's very good for charging up that base energy, that Kundalini factor that says hey four hours isn't that much I'll just keep going on with it so yeah that's why I do all this stuff you know, put my head on the ground it's like um, that's a good thing this side as well all that base energy you know even the fact of you know just the charging up your base kundalini exercise with squatting it's um it's one of the best best methods of um, keeping keeping that uh, motivational factor, getting you to the top of the mountain <laughs> instead of conking out with um, with feeling lazy about it. Okay, uh, I really don't know what this is. It's very beautiful. Yeah, I'm just getting used to this. How this focus thing works on the camera. So um. Probably the quality and production of my videos will get a lot better <laughs> uh, because I know how to use my phone properly, the camera. So um, that's a new herb plant I've seen just now. And here's another one. Just for a bit of Google reference. That's, um, yeah, another little fanny type one. But this is where I've stopped. Um, I've actually seen these before. Uh, they're they're seasonal, and they're pretty big. They're you know as big as my hand, and they get a lot bigger. So just for Google reference, oh oh, I know there's something like breadfruit up here, but I really don't know if they're breadfruit. They could just be like like breadfruit. Um, yeah, so it's, it's from one of these trees up here, definitely, and this one, that must be the first one of the season, uh, could, could have rolled even down here, because, um, oh, I just can't seem to see them, but yeah, um, definitely, they, they usually cover this path, these big, chunky, big fruits. And um, I really like to Google reference them to see if I can use them as a food source. So I'm um, oh, just looking for the rest of them. It's, um, it's a bit odd just to have one. So this must mean in the coming month, a couple of weeks or a month, there'll be a hundred more of them, I'd say. So um, yeah, this is very good. There definitely is only the one, but so yeah. Uh, this is very good. I have seen them before and I do want to know what they are. 
So I'm just actually up to the tunnels here. Dun da da da! Uh, going through the tunnels. And um, this is actually under the, the highway that leads out of Cairns, or into and out of Cairns. And this is the beautiful grassy bit. Dun da da da! So, um, yeah, this is the mountain I'm going up. It's like down there, up there, up there, and then the road goes, you know, all the way up over the mountain and 16 k's of Lake Morris Mountain Road. And um, this this first road bit is just the actual um, beginning of getting to the 16 k Mountain Road. So it's really the 16 k Mountain Road that I use to um to number one learn about food plants and um, number two get my strength building cardio strength pumping brilliant exercise happening because um because in this way um i build my muscles get fresh air up the mountain road where there's lots of trees and um also because it's mostly organic except that they spray pesticides along the side of it <laughs> which is not good uh, but because it is mostly organic, uh, the thing is I can, you know, eat the guavas and the figs and bandicoot berries and try and actually find a moringa olifera tree and, you know, there's heaps of different trees up there. Native mulberries have got actually two food books that, um, oh, check this out. I've actually got two food books that I'm gonna read up there. One's the Tim Low one, another one's about edible weeds or something. But yeah. Also, I'm, I'm learning on Google that things like this, let me focus it, beautiful, um, oh, what is it? Must be acacia, beautiful type of acacia. They're um, out in flower again, they smell so pretty, just like honey. Um, I know it's acacia because when I was younger, before my pop moved on, God bless him, and he passed away, he, um, before that he actually grew, um, he went to the botanic gardens and he, um, he collected rare wattle seeds, the rare acacia seeds, and he lived on a two acre property down, down south of Sydney in the mountains, and, um, he grew rare wattle, rare wattles, rare acacias, and yeah, I just, I know what the flowers are, because I, you know, I used to visit them sometimes, and yeah, he was very much into acacias, so, um, yeah, they smell like honey, and they're very beautiful, especially when they're in flower, so yeah, um, yeah, so that's a, another good thing too. What is it? August. August must be acacia season. I'm making a mental note of all these things in my in my brain when the seasonal uh, effect of plants, fruiting time happens in the tropics and um, all the good things like that. Uh, here we are. I think I identified this as a cotton button button top cotton top button <laughs> something form of ardesia but I'm really having second thoughts about it now um, it's not so pink before it used to be really pink like this and now it's like really blackberries so I really want to um, identify it look how many berries there are on that bit um, this is this is how the leaves are presenting right now um, that should be good for a Google identification. This is how good the berries are. Um, yeah, so, um, yeah, just for Google reference. Uh, yeah, what is it? <laughs> um, yeah, I'm slowly, oh, I'm slowly cataloging uh, a whole lot of photos of plants. And also video, video footage of plants. Uh, this is very good. 
because I can, you know, over the years build up an encyclopedia of knowledge and, you know, do some reports on uh, my Google research as well so I can collect information about their edibility, their uses, their medicine uses, uh, which parts of the plants are used, and also personal photos of different plants and types of research. So um, this is a very good project I've begun work on too. So here I am on my lovely grassy bit. Oh. Oh, okay, here we go, my lovely grassy bit, my lovely bone happening, sitting near the beautiful, beautiful guava tree, having a little cigarette, uh, in the withdrawal phase you can go cold turkey, but I think what happens if you do that, your, your body gets a, a nerves, <laughs> especially, they get this like cellular memory, muscle memory type thing happening that says, no, that's not good, that's not good. So when you go to do it again next time, you've got this um, subconscious memory thing happening that, oh no, I don't like it, <laughs> I don't want to give up. So you don't really want to give up next time. But I find if I have um, little bits of tobacco here and there in the withdrawal phase, like one or two cigarettes a day of that, maybe you know up to five in the withdrawal phase uh, it chills out my nerves it also heightens the withdrawal which is good for your, your cellular brain capacity and regrowth capacity especially if you take the brain tonic but that's another story but the fact that you don't if you have one or two when you get that super super supersonic <laughs> withdrawal craving it, it settles you down so you don't get that um, bad muscle memory of um, of no, this is too bad to give up. You, you have a good muscle memory of okay, it's not that bad to um, give up cigarettes because I've done it heaps. So in the withdrawal phase of smoking tobacco, um, it's a very good thing to give up because, you know, heightens your nervous intensity, gets you up the mountain more, packs your workout full of that confidence oomph that says, I'm just fucking going, hey, I feel good. Because <laughs> you've got this, um, this nervous factor of withdrawal phase is a very good tonic for um, exercise. It's also a very good cellular tonic, um, having a heightened nervous stimulation in your body. It, it, it seems to um, breed intelligence and desire for me to study, especially day two, into the giving up cigarettes withdrawal phase. Um, so. Day one and two on the first stage of my diet of prime, I usually smoke and eat lots of food to pack my cells full of energy. And day three, I usually give up cigarettes and do a workout because you know you're usually a bit edgy to study. <laughs> so um, day three, do a workout, start getting that strength factor pumping. And uh, day four, I usually just want to study because the the nervous withdrawal factor of the tobacco, um, it's heightened my nerves so much, I just have such an intense desire to use my brain and study and sink in a whole lot of information that, you know, I just love withdrawal factor from cigarettes, it's, um, it's amazing, so stage one of my diet is that good for that purpose as well, so I'm um, getting, actually getting this data prime in a logical format, you know, having my whiteboards on my wall where they're picturally set out different stages, three columns for the three stages. Because there's so many variables in the diet, it's just so good to be able to visualize the whole thing on two whiteboards and um, then I can develop it from there. So there's so many variables to it. It's also very good for me to, um, to make these um, continual video series of my diet of prime so that I can um, become familiar with the processes, both speaking it verbally and watching it on the video, you know, different processes of learning from the brain to become, to become conscious of all the variables of it. It, you know, helps reinforce the, the excellence and all the principles of the diet. Instead of it just being a 
a foggy principle of many, many variables that aren't formatted in any sp specific regimen yet. It's like regimenting it in the many variables of logical thinking and consciousness, you know, many formats of media and, um, you know, speaking and watching it verbally, um, writing about it, typing about it. Uh, putting it on the whiteboards and also thinking about it, getting new ideas about it. This is really ingraining it into me, um, how to develop the many specific variables so it's not just one big foggy mess, and also how to, um, how to format it correctly when I actually do go to um, write the official ebook on it is a good thing as well. So I love these, um, these Data Prime videos that I'm working on, that's for sure. Here's another good sign of the um, of the day. That there is a guava fruit. I'm at the guava tree, the beautiful, beautiful guava tree. And um, oh, there we go. It's it's just a little tree, you know, five meters high. There's a few green fruit on it, but you know, there's only one ripe one on the ground there. So um, this is a good sign. I, I love um, I love going out into the forest and uh, collecting food on my um, botany videos. So also, as these data prime videos are quite new to me, as are the botany videos, I'll be also be able to incorporate a lot of um, botany emphasis into my data prime videos. Um, so here's actually a a, um, a green guava. It's, it's just a little one. Uh, there's a few on the tree, I must admit. It's a beautiful tree, beautiful couple of trees, and there's actually a few of them. I love guava. It just infuses you with life force and beautiful energy, potential of consciousness. It's, it's a magnificent fruit. I eat it, and it's like all the beautiful energies of the fresh plant compounds and vitamins they just they rush through your veins and say okay get breathing and run up the mountain it's like guava is a beautiful beautiful fruit but um another thing I'm working on is um the fact that uh, once a fruit is ripe it's um most of it's strong uh, plant compound components that um, have been turned into a utilizable sugar which is very valuable as a food but um, if you want a, a potent plant medicine uh, okay take do an example of this um, a, a puffy little hill that one. Uh, mangoes for instance, they're, um, they're very, very tasty when they're ripe and um, you can eat lots of them. If you eat too many you get diarrhea. You know there's lots of different components to a ripe mango but if you have green mango it has a very different effect to if you have ripe mango. So the green mango and the mango leaf as well is um I use it as an appetite suppressant. I slice it thinly, you know, the seeds, the skin, the leaves, the flesh. Slice it all thinly, put it in my dehydrator, dehydrate it for a a couple of days and then um then grind it in my little Vitamix grinder into a, um, a powder and you can have this powder in water or you know water vinegar mix or anything and it's actually a very potent plant medicine as an appetite suppressant and in that you can um, you know get more energy uh, because you know it, it, if you're eating all the time a lot of your energy is going to digestion but if you have appetite suppressant 
and you know, do a bit of running, do a bit of walking, do a bit of running. That um, that gets your body ticking over that um, that you know your adrenaline starts eating the fat, and you start using your blood sugar and blood sugar stores, your glucagon stores, your fat stores, your lipid stores, and you start utilizing the capacity of your body. Whereas if you're hungry and just keep eating all the time, uh, because all the energy goes to your digestion, it's much harder to actually um, get running. So if you've eaten lots and you feel good, you've got a pond full of energy exercise, exercise energy, and you want to run up the mountain, you'll get hungry because your body's used to it, um, needing to digest. So you have a bit of this um, green mango, uh, mango leaf and powder and um, the point being it suppresses your appetite and makes you utilize your fat so that um, instead of running up the mountain and getting hungry halfway you run up the mountain and start using your, um, your, your stores cellular stores of food energy and um, in this way what happens is instead of having to eat and all your energy goes to your digestion you don't have to eat and because of the process of exercise you just keep going up the bloody mountain and you don't have to eat so you, you know don't get too fat so there's a very valuable lesson to the potency of um, unripe fruit unripe uh, plant food medicine just trying to avoid this wind here so you don't have to hear it um, Unripe fruit is medicine, and that green mango is just one example. So, um, I've only had guavas recently, and that's in the last, um, in the last six months I've been having guavas. So, you know, they are so tasty and so yummy, and they smell so nice, and they make you feel so excellent when you run up the mountain. And there's more plant trees up the mountain, too. They're just like... <laughs> beautiful little part of my life these guava trees so also I'd like to do a trial of collecting um, green guava fruit which you know it's only just on the trees now so I might get some today even and I'm um, dehydrating the, the unripe guava fruit uh, in my dehydrator grinding it up in a powder and then having that as a um, uh, herb powder medicine uh, you know, to see how good and how different the effect of, of having the, um, the green fruit is as opposed to the fresh fruit. So there's, um, there's a good point to this, uh, one being that as you do this diet of prime, you, you kind of grow an accustomed adaptability to, you know, if you're running up the mountain, and you have a different food every single day you run up the mountain. This different food makes you feel different because it's got different components of its energetic gift to you. So, um, uh, as you do the diet of prime, you grow this adaptability to become conscious of how this food affects your body. And it's not, it's a very good thing to do. So by utilizing green fruits, I mean, you know, that you got to be careful, obviously do your Google research and understand that some green fruits are toxic, some fruits are toxic and not toxic only if they're ripe, like lantana berries, there's a few others too, but um, yeah, understanding that the green component of the fruit before all the, all the, you know, compound starches, the strong compound starches of the fruit being green before they turn into the simple sugars of, of the ripe fruit they have a very strong and capable plant medicinal quality so um, this is another thing I'm still learning about too oh excuse me uh, so yeah today also I'm going to um, collect some green guava fruit from the, the trees up there Actually, that actually is a set of trees up there, yeah, just up there. So here I am 
just, um, I needed a bathroom break, so I came down, there's a roadway down there, my pack is all the way down there too, <laughs> so, um, I came up here, because I saw this bit of water on the rock here, to wash my hands after the bathroom, so, um, here I am, oh, <laughs> I'm trying not to break my neck, um, uh, this is actually a little creek, it's actually a little creek bed that's actually dry at the moment because it's, you know, last month of winter. But I've actually been fossicking up there before. Beautiful rocky climb and not many rocks to look at that are, that are of value to, um, to many people, but they're very nice rocks. Um, yeah, usually the stream is running, but... Because it's winter, we just have this beautiful little trickle happening. It's beautiful. Oh, I could get some beautiful photos of this place. I think last time I, I climbed up here and up over there, the stream goes, you know, a long way up. I did get some rocks, but they're just more sentimental value rocks <laughs> yeah, than anything else. So, um, yeah, I do like to collect rocks. Um, yeah, also another thing I've noticed is that this is a very accessible way to get to that bamboo stand, which is up there. Uh, let me see if I can focus in on it. It's right now, yeah, just, just up there, 20 meters, is um, a big bamboo stand that's hard to get to because it's so thick. So, um, yeah, just some other beautiful scenes. From this little creek betty thing. Yeah, some beautiful rock orchids. I think that's what they are. And um yeah, I like to come up creek creek beds like this and I find there's a lot of different types of trees up the um the creek bed that you, you obviously miss because you were just walking on the road and also, it's just, it's like, um, the life force out there is like a five, and up here, the more you get into the bush, especially in a creek with water in it, it's like a ten, hey, it's just so beautiful. You look up and you see the sky and leaves, and it's just gorgeous, and I love bushwalking, and there's many things I love about it. Uh, yeah, being an artist, I can truly value and appreciate all the beautiful organic structures in nature. <laughs> the many beautiful views you get. Um, beautiful colors. Beautiful scenery. Well, check out these palm fronds. They're immaculate. <laughs> uh, yeah, I love fossicking, and I think one of the most valuable reasons for me to go foster king is you know subconsciously I just I love the beauty of nature nature is such a valuable asset to this planet that you know life life on the planet wouldn't exist without the natural system and you know we of the modern age in 2015 we're only just coming to realize that and value it in many ways for sustainability thereof, and um, I personally love it, <laughs> that's for sure, oh. so, yeah, I like, um, I like coming up these little creek beds as well, they're beautiful, uh, there's not that many fruit trees I can see, but hey, I'm a new, only new to botany, so, um, being so new to botany, it's like, um, uh, <laughs> it's like, what type of trees that don't know, what type of trees that don't know, what type of trees that don't know, and, um, yeah, it's, it's not that good because, um, because I don't know that much, but it's good because I have a lot more to learn, so, um, yeah, yeah, I truly like it, <laughs> so I'm just heading down this, um, creek, for a little bit, and um, let's sit for a bit. Yeah, just uh, it's beautiful. It's just so gorgeous. Um, 
one good point about uh, the blessing of bushwalking is that if you take like two minutes, say, say two minutes of squatting in a place like this, it's just like a certain silence and majesty of feeling which is it's so spiritual and the life loss quality of it that it's um it's beyond words it's it's so good to take that two minutes and you know get away from the greasy sparse city for um for more than <laughs> more than half a day it's it's very good um yeah so i'm gonna take my two my two minutes here so i'll get back to you. Yeah, it's just, it's very beautiful. I took my two minutes and said some prayers. It's like, um, you see those, um, Tibetan monks that meditate under the waterfall praying. <laughs> it's very easy to pray in nature. It's, it's a good thing because it's so beautiful and so back to base that it's, it's a blessing in itself. Um, so yeah, just taking the two minutes, uh, here, it's much like fossicking. Um, you know, you can go around and look, look at a whole pile of rocks, you know, rock after rock after rock after rock, and they just all look like rocks, and then you stop and think, and it's like, right in front of you, one just appears and you didn't even see it, um, you know, it could be a sapphire or a ruby or anything, and you didn't know that rock was there, and it just looked like a whole pile of rocks, and it's only until you actually took the time to be quiet and notice that the rock appeared to you it's like that it's like that even with the trees you can say okay quick look up here there's like a whole lot of trees whole lot of rocks but if you take that two minutes of sitting still quiet praying in the forest just to be balanced and harmonious with the beautiful life force system you know the trees they, they seem to appear to you in different forms, you know, uh, not different forms, but if there's fruit trees, you know, you might not even have noticed them, and then, um, you know, it's like finding that ruby, you didn't see it until you took the time to be silent and still, and the ruby came out to you, it's like, it's like that with nature, you won't see it until, you know, until you're silent enough to be at one with it, and then you find your ruby, uh, yeah, it's like that with sapphires too. Uh, you're not actually gonna. Well, <laughs> you're not actually gonna know there's a sapphire there until you know you, you get the gist of. Yeah, of like yeah, it just looks like a whole pile of stones, and then you gotta take the time to be still. And once, once you're still enough, it's like, hey, I found one. <laughs> It's like that, you know, it just, it just looks like a pile of rocks. <laughs> the more you pray and become harmonious in nature, it's like the more, the more the beauty of the gems of nature become familiar to you. And it just doesn't look like one big mass of trees and dirt and rocks. It looks like a majestic ecosystem, which is... um beyond geniosity, like we have a system in this modern age, you know, a modern age, current age of 2015, we have a World Wide Web, which is very much in its infancy, and we have this system called science, which is, you know, I don't know, it's been going a thousand years or something, and um, science still can't understand that the miracle wonders of the universe and that's a thousand years worth of knowledge so if if things take just look like a pile of rocks and a bunch of trees it's like our science which is um a thousand years on it still doesn't have capacity to understand many things in the geniosity of the nature of the wonder of the universe which life is and um so it's very good to um, to take the time. So you know, things 
they don't just so much look like you know a pile of rocks and a bunch of leaves they have the majesty of the geniosity of beauty about them of which you know all nature is and it's only by taking the time that you can truly understand how good that is okay so um here I am I made it to this little stand of guavas that I was talking about and lo and behold <laughs> there's um lots of green fruit or not lots but you know just getting more to it so yeah I actually found a piece of coral in the forest near the rocks which is piece of coral but it's a bit unusual but yeah I just you do sometimes find some unusual things like this yeah. oh there's a little one check out how good that little one is that's how little it is so yeah um uh yeah just looking at all the green guavas more guava trees more guava trees, um, yeah, lantana, lantana berries. Um, there's a few stands of um, guava trees on the way up, which is a good thing. Uh, yeah, definitely. I'll, um, get some um, green guava <laughs> on the um, way back down uh, yeah I find that um you know as the uh, here we are next to some lantana it's very beautiful but you know as the, the morning uh, you know it's, it's cooler the dew is setting it's cold the plants aren't that active as they grow grow uh, the, the sun as it rises over the sky up to midday it's very hot and then the afternoon you know in the heat the plants like um they're stressed out and they um they contract their energy their cells to conserve water and you know um, I find that it feels better for me to pick fruit um, in the afternoon probably three to four o'clock or two to four o'clock because they're, they're not stressed out and they're starting to you know utilize that you know the chlorophyll it, it sucks uh, it converts the sunlight into the plant food so you get that stressy factor of the morning the midday then you get like two o'clock when it, it starts cooling off and there's less sunshine and between two and four the chlorophyll I, I predict would be like packing into the cells of the fruit so I think the fruit being less stressed out and more packed full of um, plant nutrients in the afternoon that's when I like to pick it so um, because it's about uh, it's probably one o'clock by now um, I think I will I'll pick it on the way back down at four o'clock or something so yeah I'll just give you a, an idea of just how beautiful this lantana is it's uh it's got a certain majesty about it it's gorgeous check that out the brilliance there's one very beautiful like a flaming sunset or something they have little berries as well oh, i love them Okay, so I'm just squatting here near this lantana. Uh, I finished the video and <laughs> just taking some beautiful photos of all the lantana berries and stuff. And just there in front of me, there's a um a sandpaper fig, and I'm like, oh, sandpaper fig, you know? Just didn't see it till I actually squatted down. And here is um my breakfast <laughs> or lunch. <laughs> uh, sandpaper figs. There's like a whole lot of them there. So I'm going to pick a few of them and munch on them as I go up the mountain, get a little sugar rush and um, 
Yeah, maybe I might, I might pick some on the way down. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, they sometimes go moldy. And I'm, I'm into eating some green fruit, but not much of it. So three little berries like that um, is good. <laughs> because even though they're not ripe, um, you know, they're still edible. And they have a lot of um, plant compounds being unripe that they don't have when they're ripe. So just eating three little berries, um, three little fig berries like that, it's a very strong and potent plant medicine, which can actually, um, you know, like I was saying earlier, that as you become more familiar with the processes of your body, because the data plant, you know, enthuses such strength and health and vitality capacities into you, um, you become more conscious of the way the food affects your body. Uh, so if I were to have, you know, 20 little unripe fig berries, it might, like, seize my guts up and, um, make me constipated or something. <laughs> but just having three of them, it's like, you know, I'm gonna notice does it have an astringent, a detoxing, an energizing, a, energizing, a tonic factor, you know, um, that's actually the lookout, just up over there, so that means I have all this way, just up there, and I will notice a subtle difference. You know, not having food from here to there, and I just had the sandpaper figs back there. I will notice a subtle difference in me as to how those figs affect me from here to here. You know, my energy, my mood, my... You know, just the little things you notice about how food makes you feel. Mm. So that's a, another good way of how to test different edible foods, obviously. There are certain ways of um, how to test to see if a food is edible, but um, I won't go into that. Um, so here's another little stand of lavas. It's actually near the um, the giant monster. <laughs> I mean the the um tel the electricity pole. So the trees definitely aren't as healthy. These are guava trees too. And I think that's um it has to do with um probably the electricity bowl, I'm not sure. So um yeah, we'll think about it. Mm. Here's some more berries. see them but it's very good um, yeah, there's more guava trees up here as well that's actually a guava macaranga another guava Another macaranga, another guava. It's endless. <laughs> okay, just been taking pictures of some little uh, heavy, weedy things. Um, yeah, one thing I got to say you see bits of um, rubbish like that, a coke can on the side of the road. I usually, um, I usually pick it up <laughs> up the top at the lookout I usually pick up the rubbish because there's a big bin but um I think there's council workers that pick it up on the roadside too 
they can keep that job and I want him to deal with that. But, um, yeah. Another thing is that, well, yesterday, I had to go to the shops for a second time. I usually go to the shops once a fortnight. And, um, this is very good. Pay like between 80 and 200 dollars for a fortnight's food, which is pretty good. Uh, because I eat lots of beans and rice. But yesterday I picked out on like uh, a can of Coke and half a block of old Jamaican chocolate in like um, five minutes or two minutes or something. So I had this massive sugar brush. Don't worry, it's alright. <laughs> But, um, I don't do it all the time, but it's so yummy, just sometimes you have to do it. And, um, yeah, so there's, there's a difference. Sometimes I splurge on a junk food hit because it's too yummy. Just, you know, I feel healthy like that. But, um, only sometimes. The rest of the time I like to um, eat um, organic food. I know there's, um... I'm just looking at this tree here, I'm trying to tell whether it's a native citrus. There are finger limes and um, it's through all the grass so I'm not going to go to it but it looks a bit citrusy, I can't quite tell. But yeah, sometimes I splurge on junk food but or maccas or something but only sometimes. And um, the rest of the time I'm eating brown rice and sprouts. And this is um, this beautiful botany hobby I've just stumbled across in the past um, on the past um, you know four to six months. It's most excellent. Check out this for a little fruit. Now that's spectacular. There's another one. I'll have to stop and get some photos of this. Definitely. So, um, it looks like it's been on some type of vine that's dried up. Oh, here we go. Let's see if I can actually pull it out. There's a whole lot of them. Um, I have no idea what they are. They look a little cucumberish. So I'll get some photos for video reference. There's more up there. Might even take some home. Although, yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> okay, definitely very interesting. But yeah, eating food up the mountain, the bush foods, it's um, it's a lot better than. And I was splurging on junk food all the time. Oh, check out this for green ants. <laughs> but, um, it's definitely to, healthy to have a balance of both, I think. That's for sure. And they must be making a nest or something. <laughs> Very interesting goodies. Okay, so, you know, I, I was at this part of the tree here, and I moved down here to the verge, and I found some more of these pretty um, eggy shaped things. Definitely the eggy shaped things. But then I saw this ripe one in there. It's half eaten. Let's see if I can focus that. It's half eaten, but there's a couple of ripey ones there. So this is a new and interesting discovery for me. Um, just a little bit of extra Google research potential for me. Most excellent. God bless it. Thank you, God. Okay, so here I am at this beautiful tree. I think that's some type of dendrodium. Dendrodium or cymbidium or some type of native orchid. And, um, if I prove myself wrong, I'll feel really silly. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, but anyway, here's another really good one that's got good visuals about it. Being an artist, I know that red and green, they contrast really nicely. So that's like a very beautiful nature shot. Definitely. Uh, yep. So, um, here I am. That's a whole lot of ginger there, too. I'm not sure what type of ginger, but the, um, the, the ginger that has little blue berries on it, that's the native ginger, and you can eat that one. Uh, I won't say the berries, because <laughs> it was blue ginger season, and I ate the berries, you know, some down there, some up here, some up here. I ate about five, five or six lots of native ginger berries, just a little handful, because that's what it said on Google. Um, and I didn't spit out the seeds, I just chewed them. And I nearly ran to the bloody dam. <laughs> so that's like, um, you know, an effort of, well, three Ks to, oh, oh, <laughs> okay, an effort of three Ks to get here, 16 Ks up the mountain, and, um, 16 Ks back down the mountain, three Ks to get home. That's nearly 40 Ks. <laughs> and because I ate, you know, little handfuls of the, native ginger and I didn't spit out the seeds. <laughs> that was pumping it up, eh? It's a good sign, that native ginger. So, um, yeah, if you don't want to stop, just eat the native ginger berries and this is very good. Uh, I also collected them, but they became a potpourri ornament. I didn't actually dry them out. <laughs> so that's alright. I will collect some more. Excuse me. When it is native ginger season. So, here I am. My pack, I was getting thirsty, so I, being a comedian, I said, hey, a sign, it's a, it's a sign of the times, if you're thirsty, to stop, so I stopped, drank nearly a whole liter of water, that was actually full, <laughs> see this two liter milk jug, that was actually full, <laughs> uh, before I stopped, so I was very thirsty, and also this, is my um my big that's probably 600 mils of super hubby herb juice stuff that's gonna make me chuck if i don't drink it correctly um so yeah i'm gonna the lookout as you can see it goes up there up there just around the up there bit that's where the lookout is but i didn't make it there i had to stop so also got a bit hungry after those um green figs uh those you know little unripe sandpaper figs i was a bit hungry so i decided to do a little bit of puffing and huffing and running and stuff and here i am having a rest i've actually um been taking so many photos <laughs> of i took probably you know 20 to 50 photos just in the last 700 meters and I was like going from plant to plant to plant going oh my god more oh my god more oh my god more you know looking at all the good plant life photos I could possibly get I had to eventually stop because I annoyed myself so much so that was kind of funny too um yeah so then I did some running then I decided I was just super thirsty had to stop and here I am and um yeah, there's some more ginger. See all that in there? This beautiful ginger plant. So here I am, nearly at the lookout, having a break in the forest. And um, the sky up there is just beautiful. There's like cars going past. You don't get that many cars, but you can't beat that sky, that's for sure. Just past that little drinky station and looking at these um, beautiful gum trees and the bark there there's the signs here and um, I've quenched my thirst thank god oh here's these beautiful ones again I have to actually figure out what they are they're very nice um, I've seen them a couple of times but um, yeah I quenched my thirst and, um, I guess you noticed that the water was brown, 
Well, that is actually grana powder. I buy it from the health food shop. Um, uh, yeah. I have seen grana photos on Google, so I know it's an Amazon rainforest find. So because this is um, uh, tropics, subtropics, or whatever, there's a lot of tropical rainforest trees. I don't know if I'll get it in Australia. But it's possible I might get a mere similar relative. I love grana. It's got lots of different types of caffeine in it. Um, gives your energy and stimulates your desire to exercise as you see. And um, also what it does is it helps your body to start utilizing its fat source, which is um, definitely a good thing because, um, uh, you know, if you're overweight, which I have been, <laughs> I once took my brain tonic for a year and um, ended up spending 20 hours a day on four computers just doing too much stuff. Um, getting fat and I got too fat one of the ways I got rid of my weight after being such a computer had nerdy brains um, study had music music um, fanaticists um, was I took lots of guarana and started doing more exercise so this is one of the very good things about guarana and, um, this is uh, the lookout, I mean, pre lookout views. Beautiful cloudscape up there. Beautiful pastel skies. That's the road just around that corner. At the top is the lookout. So, um, check out the color of this gum. Eucalyptus. It's just beautiful. Silver goose gum. Just here. So yeah, here I am. Pre lookout. Chatting about Garana. If you ever do see a photo of Garana, it's the most unusual looking thing there is. It's beautiful. So I have seen a few unusual things like that in the forest, but you know <laughs> not actually that one yet. <laughs> so it's very exciting, you know this um, research and um, yeah that, that's what that was a, a um, grana grana herb I think it's Paulina the big name of it Paulina something and um, gives you lots of energy burns your fat and gets you up the top of the mountain so um, it's also good it's good for stage one of the diet because it helps, you know, pump that strength factor, utilize fat, and also um, get the adrenaline pumping so you can build a decent regularity of um, continuum which increases strength capacity, gives you that type of confidence and enthusiasm for exercise so you can, you know, you know when you're pumping 35 kilos, 10, 20 years time, you don't want to be less than that, you don't want to still be at that, you want to have increased your capacity to um, actually go beyond the 30, you know, the mark that you're at 10 years ago, you know, if you're pumping 35 years and then in 10 years time you're not pumping at least double that, it's not that good, so um, yeah, Guarana gives you that confidence and motivation to really pump that strength factor which actually increases dynamically with age. And um, that's one of the reasons of my diet is um, to increase that, that health and vitality and strength factor in life, in the cells with the cyclic diet um, to promote longevity and um, 
you know, decreased disease and all the regularity that goes with the old age process. Um, actually enhancing the factors of longevity with the diet is just, it's something that makes sense to me only because I've studied so much. If I hadn't studied for the last 20 years, health food and diet and exercise and, you know, a little medicine and all that goes along with that, then I wouldn't have this, um, this capacity to put the two and two together, which is, you know, what's right in front of your face. It, it's got to make sense to you before you understand that diet and exercise can possibly promote longevity. And this is, um, I think it's a very wise way to live. Longevity promotion diet, it's, um, it's, it's very good. So, yeah, thank you God for, um, my capacity to learn and understand things in life. And also, God bless the capacity I have to, um, to expand my knowledge and also pass it on to others so that, you know, they may live a good life too. The way I see it is, um, if you have, say, a hundred friends and you all live till you're 60 to 90 and then you die, you've, you've made a good point in life that, you know, you've become elders and everything. But if you have a hundred friends and they all live till, you know, a hundred thousand years old because you figured out how to do the longevity thing, it's like, you know, you've got a hundred thousand years of age and wisdom to, to dedicate to society and honor the world with. So it's, um, it's very important to me to actually figure out this longevity factor in the diet of prime, and um, that's for sure. Okay, here I am, beautiful little view, getting this camera thing happening. Yeah, got myself a bigorette, <laughs> big cigarette that is. Um, comedic language for the time. Get some little beautiful friends. Okay, the time is oh <laughs> ten to four on um Saturday, eighth of August, two thousand and fifteen. I'm just here, made a little camp, have a big drink, my pack, the campfire. I'm actually at this big water tank. And this is the beautiful view I got. It's just like majesty. So, um, yeah, I've been having a couple of, uh, couple of cigarettes. Yeah, I picked up a whole lot of rubbish. There's a bit more to pick up. But I'm going to sit up there on that big rock near the water tank. Sit in here. Majesty. I haven't eaten yet and I had to um, change my SD card. Got my little light off. I was up here but the um, talking about these little plant friends. <laughs> having a big rat which I s left just here but here I am carrying on with my new SD card in the phone camera. I'm just like sitting here, squatting here, charging up instead of sitting. If I sit, I'll, um, no. if I sit, I'll get tired and I won't want to go up the mountain. And it's only four o'clock, so here I am. Oh. Saying some prayers and sitting up the mountain. Uh, it's just um, a beautiful, beautiful day. Um, yeah, so actually, I might sit down and think a bit. <laughs> uh, yeah, having a cigarette. I'm really at a loss.
ask for words. I think I need some sunflower kernels and some some of that super herb juice and I'll feel better. Okay, and this is um it's an old oregano oil bottle but it's actually um a couple of salty plums and sunflower kernels. I've just had um <laughs> still chewing. Just had a couple of handfuls of uh, sunflower kernels with a salty plum and uh, I feel better already. That salt fix just like hits you. It's like you can imagine you do a lot of um a lot of um sweating and salt displacement and you know sweat out a lot of the salt on the way up here, especially if you've had onion juice herb smoothies. <laughs> So um, having the sunflower kernels, just had two hands a little bit so I can, you know, have lots of energy and digest it a lot easier. Um, the salt just hits you and the salt replacement is an instant energizer. So that's very good. I've got my little torch here too. It's actually a head torch that goes around your head. And that's a little torch. So I'm deciding whether I'll make it a... Um, a big video or not, I um, I like going out at night, only sometimes and definitely not too much, so um, in this way, uh, I'm going out at night time, I'm slowly becoming accustomed to, you know, being able to deal with a different environment, uh, yeah, so that's very good. I'm gonna have another cigarette, obviously, and um, there's also some, I don't know if you can see them, if you can focus in on those plants at all. There's just some little native passion fruit with um, green little berry things on it. So I'm going to uh, check them out. There's um, some cleavers over there. This is a big spot for cleavers up here near the water tank. And um, it's a massive water tank. But, um, yeah, I'm going to also have another cigarette. Oh, there's some cockatoos. Let's see if we can get them. Yeah, a couple of cockatoos. Going to have another cigarette. And, um, hey, cockatoos. God bless you. Hey, little friends come to visit. <laughs> God bless you, goodies. <laughs> Yeah, it's the little things in life. Oh, it's the little things in life that make life interesting. So um, I've got 15% battery left on this, so that's only like not much footage at all. <clears throat> uh, so I'll make it quick now and probably take a lot more photos. And um, yeah, have another cigarette and say some prayers. I've actually had a little campfire here one afternoon and um, yeah I might study my books. It's nice to think up here with the big water tank and the beautiful beautiful view. That's for sure. So here I am. Got my pack all, and all my stuff out. <laughs> Got some um, that super herb juice smoothie and just watch how fast that sun is slowly creeping westward. grass is getting shady, 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 shady. <sighs> this is very good. So, um, yeah, having a bigorette cigarette too. Um, yeah, the sun is just creeping so quickly westward. <laughs> Got this beautiful view of the mountains and the pastel skies up there. Yeah, it's just... <laughs> It's the glory of beautiful life itself. <laughs> Sitting on this mountain. Having a lovely cigarette. Probably got that lovely sunshine up there. Yeah. Sun to the west. It's the east. The sun comes up over here mountains. Um, I live down there. 
so the sun comes up there, so it might come up over, I don't know, whatever. I've got this beautiful view happening. I'm smoking a cigarette. I think um, this will be the last video I'll do, and I'll just use the rest of the battery for um, photos and stuff. But God bless this world. There is a definite beautiful, beautiful world. So many things in it, so much genius to the perfection of it. Um, the clouds in the sky to the mountains. Everything in my life. Thank you, God. And God bless you.